the question everyone wants to know is why do you keep having delays? Sure, I, I, uh, it's a good question, fair question, but but uh, we're in good shape. We the why why is it taking longer than we had hoped to? It's where our starting point was a year ago. Um, we've got so we've got uh, all of the manufacturing data to put together into a package that we submit globally to all the global regulatory agencies, and with that we submit all of the clinical efficacy and safety data. And we we have some of the best clinical and safety. Um, data that is that exists and we've we've got that put together we're assembling the manufacturing package and and frankly we just a year ago we had zero manufacturing capacity we had zero analytical and process development laboratories and we've built that all in a year on eight different countries so so that's what's taken us longer but we're there we've got uh i think all of the uh data data being assembled now and and so i think we're in good shape so Stan, I think any, just to be clear, any, there, anytime is, there you, is no anytime problem. You, sorry, there is no problem with the vaccine. This is a manufacturing issue, not a vaccine issue. No, it's not. No, we've we've shown consistently uh, we've got a great vaccine, and, and in fact, we're about to unblind a U.S. trial that has thirty thousand people at it in a couple of weeks, and and I think that'll just further support um, uh, the fact that we've got a great vaccine. Um, how many doses do you anticipate you'll be e able to provide in twenty twenty two? We're looking at, uh, between ourselves and our partners, uh, we're looking at providing 2 billion doses. And we're, we're, we're moving toward that rate of manufacture right now. We've, everybody has had some problems here and there with, with uh, the raw material supply. We're getting through those. We just had, I think we had some breakthroughs this week in, in terms of getting, getting things like filters and bags and, and that uh, distributed around our sites. And, and um, we'll be at the, by the end of this year, we'll be at the rate of maybe 150 million doses a month. And uh, between now and then, we'll build up uh, the capacity to do that. Stan, one of the big advantages that your vaccine had was that it was more stable at a higher temperature. Um, the MRA teams have managed to be able to tweak theirs. They're now stable at higher temperatures. Do you think the advantage that you were able to demonstrate early on has been uh, has been eroded by the fact that this is coming a little later than anticipated. No, I, you, well, you have to look at across the board. So, so what what are the what are the factors? What are the characteristics of a vaccine that make it better or worse than some other vaccine? You've got you've got efficacy. We have demonstrated efficacy uh, at least as good as everybody else's. We had 96% efficacy in, in a large UK trial against the uh, original Wuhan strain. We showed that I think we're the only company that's shown in, in an efficacy trial that our vaccine works against the variants in the UK and South Africa. So that's great. Uh, the second thing you want to look at, well, maybe the first thing you want to look at is a safety profile. We have the best safety profile, the most benign vaccine that, that exists right now. And then you look at the um, uh, stability, it's important. Uh, and, and we will be able to, st uh, we'll have stability uh, both in storage okay. and in shipping and, and in the doctor's office uh, at refrigerated temperatures. And so I think that, that all of these put together uh, determine you know, how your vaccine stacks up. Uh, Stan, you mentioned the different variants. Um, in the meantime, though, now we have the Indian variant that looks to be about right. in 44 other 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 countries. Um, how, are you testing against that? We are. We we have we have a program to test against the as a we've we've shown how the vaccine works against the UK variant, against the South African variant. We have uh, uh, the ability to make variants against India, against the New York, and against the California strains. We're doing them all. Stan, the question is: one of the, the data will tell us whether the data will tell us whether you need to actually change the strain okay. of, of uh, vaccine to match the variant, or whether uh, one one or two strains uh, in our vaccine are sufficient to cover all of them. We, we make broadly neutralizing antibodies, so we work against just more than more than just one strain. In terms of, is there a limit to the number of antigens you can get in? I, there, there are all kinds of, uh, of, of strains now we're, we're starting to focus on. How much can you pack in? Yeah, so that's, that's another advantage that we have. We use very low doses. We use five micrograms. That's very small. And, and, and for instance, when we make a flu vaccine with, with uh, protein, we put in 240 micrograms into a flu vaccine. And we're just using five micrograms in coronavirus. We can, 
you know, the, the limit is, we don't know what the limit is. It's, we can put a number of strains in. And that makes it definitely very different than some others that we've seen. Does that mean that if I get your vaccine, do I not need a booster? I think uh, you're, we're, that's what we're looking at. We're in, we're in the middle of a booster trial right now, and, and it's being run in the UK, and they're taking our vaccine and Moderna and AZ uh, and running them against people that have already been vaccinated with one or the other. It's called a mix and match trial. So we'll actually see uh, probably by the end of June uh, how the different vaccines work. But I think everybody's fairly con uh, convinced that uh, with waning uh, back, with waning antibodies over the period of a year, you're going to want to boost, uh, maybe much like you do with the flu vaccine. I see. Stan, how do you feel about your IP? You willing to share it? Yeah. We've we're, we're way ahead of that. Actually, we we knew that this was going to be a global problem. We knew that we needed to get our vaccine out to more than just high income countries a year ago. It's a long time ago in, in this in this pandemic world. A year ago, we partnered up with the biggest vaccine company in the world, Serum Institute of India, that makes one and a half billion vaccines in all four low and middle income countries. And so we licensed and tech transferred all of our all of our IP hmm. to them so that they can scale up and, and uh, supply the world with our vaccine. And we did it without any upfront payments or milestones uh, just to just to serve that very purpose. Giving away IP doesn't solve the problems. It's very complicated, takes many years to get to where we are. If we just gave it away, you wouldn't have a vaccine any faster in those countries. What we did is the right thing. And, and in fact, mm -hmm. we just signed an agreement with uh, COVAX in the UK and, and Europe would to, uh, to give them 1.1 billion doses. They'll get our first doses. Oh, and wow. uh, I think that's the right way to handle this. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Uh, that's quite interesting. Before I let you go, real quick, Stan, um, Guy and I both have kids, so we're vested interest in your answer. Uh, where are you uh, in trials with kids? My daughter's six. Uh, uh, Guy's kids are a little older, but where are you in that? Uh, we, we've started our adolescent and pediatric trials, so oh. we'll, we'll be there for your kids.